everybody. Welcome back to CN Live here on NRA TV. Colian Noir, as I've said, is out for the week. He'll be back next week. I'm Bill Whittle from BillWhittle.com, sitting in for him in Los Angeles. And we're talking to our friend uh, Beth Bauman from BearingArms.com. But before we go back to Beth, Beth, I thought maybe you might want to watch this with us. Uh, we've got another clip of Donald Trump. It's about two minutes long. It's mostly just kind of a put put together highlights. And I think what we'd like to do is uh, run that. And then, Beth, we can talk a little bit about the tone and and some of the things really a little more specifically before we uh, before we wrap up for the day. So let's see if we can see that second clip. I'm here tonight to deliver a message of unity and strength. And it is a message deeply delivered from my heart. Then in 2016, the earth shifted beneath our feet. The rebellion started as a quiet protest. We have begun to drain the swamp of government corruption by imposing a five-year ban on lobbying coal miners. One of the Keystone and Dakota access pipelines, job-killing Trans-Pacific Partnership, that women entrepreneurs have access to the networks, markets, and capital they need to start a business and live out their financial dreams. Reducing violent crime. Border security. Of a great, great wall along our southern border. From radical Islamic terrorism. Demolish and destroy ISIS, a network of lawless savages that have slaughtered Muslims and Christians and men and women and children of all faiths and all beliefs. To extinguish this vile enemy from our planet, 94 million Americans are out of the labor force. Over 43 million people are now living in poverty. And over 43 million Americans are on food stamps. And we've lost 60,000 factories since China joined the World Trade Organization that will reduce the tax rate on our companies. He wanted me to ride one, and I said, no, thank you. <laughs> it's been a long time since we had fair trade. The first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, warned that the abandonment of the protective policy by the American government will produce want and ruin among our people. Well, there's Donald Trump talking about Harley Davidson motorcycles instead of the rising price of arugula in Washington, D.C. suburbs. That's masterful work. It absolutely is. Um, you know, Beth, uh, we're, we're all um, on the same team as far as uh, defending ourselves, our, our rights here at home, and defending ourselves against uh, enemies foreign and domestic. Um, Donald Trump did something and has been doing something that we just didn't see in the previous administration who couldn't say the word Islamic and terrorist in the same sentence. He said he just called him right out and he had a line I like very much. He said, we need to extinguish, speaking of ISIS, we need to extinguish this vile evil from the planet. No, he didn't have to, he didn't say we didn't have to understand them. He didn't say we have to work with them. He didn't have to say we had to consider their positions or their sensibilities. He said they're a vile evil and they need to be exterminated from the planet, extinguished rather. What do you have to think, uh, say about that? It's nice to actually have a president who wants to defend the American people and not terrorists. Isn't um, it though? <laughs> the first Isn't it step, grand? The first step in admitting we have a problem is by calling it what it is. And he did that. We need we need that leadership. ISIS, Al Qaeda, any of these terrorist organizations need to be completely slaughtered and eliminated. What's wrong with saying that? I, I don't understand why we have to tiptoe around the issues. I don't care what a person or a terrorist thinks of me. If they're willing to bomb me or behead me, I'm going to call them what they are. And the left needs to just sit down and shut up about that. That's all I have to say. Uh, I don't understand why we can't come together on this issue. They hate all Americans equally. They don't care what party, what position you hold. They want us dead. They hate everything America stands for. And we need to eliminate that threat before they eliminate us. Not to quibble with you, Beth. I mean, I'm with you 100 percent, but they don't hate us all equally. They actually hate the progressives an awful lot more. They see them as as extremely sinful and, and you know, and, and just decadent. Um, and, and you're right. We've got a president who's actually speaking up for America first and, and in no uncertain terms. And the thing that the left can't seem to realize is that this actually, believe it or not, Donald Trump making statements like this actually makes us safer. It doesn't make us less safe. It doesn't make us more likely to go to war. It makes us less likely to go to war. He is basically saying to 
the world, uh, we have got a big stick here and we've been talking softly and maybe it's time for us to start swinging this bat a little bit. Um, it was it was rallying. And, and so that kind of takes me to the next point. Uh, Beth, did you have you noticed not just during the speech last night, but really since his election and even before that, that Donald Trump has a, a genuine sympathy and uh, respect for um, our law enforcement law enforcement officers and our and our members serving in the military that this isn't just a show or something that he does he genuinely honestly not only respects them but has a high degree of affection for them I remember right after the election he was getting on his plane and they had um, you know all these motorcycle policemen below him and, and he went down the line you know he didn't go right on the plane just went down the line shook all their hands it's kind of a nice um, change of pace isn't it to have a, a president yeah. who who recognizes the sacrifices that are made and acknowledges them it is, and and I think over the last eight years, America has really forgotten what it's like to have a commander in chief who respects our military and our law enforcement. Um, you know, for as much as the left hates George W. Bush, the one thing they could always say about him is he did everything in his power for veterans, and they respected him. They there was this mutual respect and and. They loved saying he was my president. And I think that the same kind of of notion is coming to be with Trump. He genuinely respects them and and applauds their sacrifice. He realizes that. Um, and I think he applauds it even more because he's not someone who has served where some of our past presidents have. So they understand mm -hmm. the sacrifice that goes into it. I think being on, on that side of the aisle as someone who has never been in law enforcement or military, I think I think he's kind of come to terms with it, with himself saying, you know, I could never be that courageous enough to put my yes. life on I'm in that position, but I'm so grateful that you are willing to do yes. that for my safety. And, and, and I think a lot of us can agree with that. Um, my dad was in law enforcement for 30 years. I have a strong military family and law enforcement family, and I've always had hold veterans close to my heart because of that. And I look at these men and women and say, wow, like I admire your bravery and your courage so much. And I think Trump holds that same sentiment as well. Beth, I couldn't have put it better. It was really perfectly summarized, uh, and and it's an incredibly nice change of pace and a, and a breath of fresh air uh, all throughout the country. I think everybody can feel it. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That's our friend uh, Beth Bauman from BearingArms.com. Thank you. And, um, and we're looking forward to having you back uh, real soon because it's been uh, a remarkable, remarkable, remarkable month with Donald Trump. Uh, just to close on what uh, Beth was talking about, about recognizing uh, the people that that man the uh, thin green line or the thin blue line, depending on how you look at it, our policemen and our and our uh, members of the U.S. military. Uh, it's clear that he has a, a deep abiding uh, affection and respect for them, as, as Beth just pointed out. Uh, but certainly, without question, the highlight of the speech last night and maybe the highlight of any single presidential congressional speech I've ever seen was when Donald Trump um, pointed out the, uh, the widow of one of our SEALs who'd been killed on a raid recently and, and he explained to the entire country what that one man had done. Now, we all know that there are thousands of people out there deployed in, in dangerous areas and that, and that large numbers of them either don't come home or haven't come home, uh, not just through the last conflicts, but, but throughout the entire history of this nation. And in, in kind of the same way that the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier represents everybody who, who, who was lost in, in defending our freedoms here in America, I thought that when Donald Trump said his name, pointed out his widow, you could see the grief on her face, but also the pride on her face. You could see that this was something bigger than just having lost uh, the person she cares most in the world about. And when he was finished, there was an ovation that must have been standing ovation two, three minutes long. And it wasn't partisan. It wasn't people saying, oh, I like, I like what you're saying for my team. Uh, a president who can, who can call, and there she is. I mean, look at that face. If you, you you just look at the face, the, the terrible, terrible um, 
conflict and emotions that she's going through. She's she's terribly sad and she's terribly um, full of grief, but at the same time, she's almost bursting with pride that finally, finally, somebody has stood there on the floor of the uh, House of Representatives and put the camera on somebody like that for a change and said, this is what your husband did. He's a hero. He's he's died defending our freedoms. And I think Donald Trump had a, a, a line something like, and what he did will be etched in infinity. <sighs> it's enough to make a tough conservative guy like me just break down squeal like a little girl. It was an amazing day. It was a remarkable speech. And um, and life in America is getting better pretty fast, considering we've been at this for, what, five, six weeks now since that amazing, uh, uh, since he's been president coming off of that amazing win. Just goes to show you what you can do when you actually get together, get out and vote. And that's why I'm such a proud, proud moment for me to be sitting here in this chair, sitting in for Coley Noir. Uh, representing the NRA, which I think is simply the, the most powerful force of freedom, not only in America, but in the entire world. Uh, I will be back with you tomorrow on Thursday. We'll see Colian next week. And until then, this is CN Live on NRA TV.